once upon a time, retirement planning was simple. You would retire, then cash out of the stock market, leave the risk behind, and move into bonds paying 6 to 8%. Those days are long gone. If you live in Chandler and are retiring soon, you know this dilemma only too well. Today, you're lucky to get 2% on a quality bond. The solution? Do what smart, logical retirees are doing. They're making the move for their IRA rollover to the next generation of principal-protected, low-cost, high-income annuities through IQ Wealth Management in Scottsdale. Best-selling author, leading financial advisor, and the host of Mastering Money on Money Radio, Steve Jurich, is the trusted advisor that you are looking for. Let's listen in on a recent broadcast of his popular show, Mastering Money. At any point throughout, you can visit our website by clicking the little circle with the eye in the top right corner. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Financial Review on Money Radio. I'm Sinclair No. Thank you for joining us today. An annuity is a contract you purchase from an insurance company. For the premium you pay, you receive certain fixed and or variable interest crediting options that can compound tax deferred until withdrawn. When you're ready to receive income, an annuity offers a variety of guaranteed payout options backed by the financial strength of the issuing insurer. All annuities are a blend of investment and insurance, although many annuities are more closely akin to a fixed income savings that can pay lifetime income for up to two people. The key benefit there is that the annuity can provide secure stability to help diversify a retirement portfolio that can be converted to a reliable insured income that can be more like a pension than an investment. At that point, the annuity owner can stop worrying about markets and even better, can stop worrying about running out of income. Immediate annuities begin this pensionizing process immediately. You exchange your lump sum principal, known as your premium, for income payments for as long as you live. Deferred annuities allow you to grow your future income and defer or put off that permanent income decision, much like deferring Social Security. All annuities can pay income through a process known as annuitization. Some deferred annuities allow you to add a rider to the annuity, allowing you to enjoy the lifetime income but without having to annuitize. Annuities have evolved greatly, not only over the last 100 years when many insurance companies started offering products to the public, but especially in the past 15 years. Today, there are over 2,000 annuities to choose from. Some offer more income and benefits than others, including bonuses on income, principal, long-term care, and or death benefits. The key word there is or. Let's get some insights from an authority on the subject. Best-selling author and certified income specialist Steve Jurich works closely with retiring engineers, teachers, managers, business owners, health care professionals, attorneys, and accountants to help build, grow, and protect their life savings. Steve has trademarked a retirement strategy known as the IQ Wealth Safer Buckets Retirement System, designed to achieve more income with less risk using fewer dollars, thereby leaving more assets available for long-term equity growth. Steve is a fiduciary and heads IQ Wealth Advisory LLC in Scottsdale, a registered investment advisor. His comments have been seen on Bloomberg, MarketWatch, and CNBC.com. He was a co-contributor to the best-selling book, Successonomics, with Steve Forbes. Steve, how are you today? Sinclair, doing just great today. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you, sir. Good. We hear from multiple sources, Steve, and we can understand the idea that annuities are a kind of combination of 
insurance, and investment. Is that a fair description? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, there's probably, uh, you know, you can take it from there and, and really expand, but if someone is just trying to say, hey, what makes an annuity different from a mutual fund or an ETF uh, or a, a CD, that's where you would go. Is you would say, well, an annuity adds an element of insurance. And what type of insurance? Well, the main type would be income insurance. And I think people have really come around to the idea that insuring income is a is just as important as insuring your house or your car. Maybe more important. Probably so. With the insuring of your income, you can ensure that you can pay the premiums on your car insurance and your house insurance mm -hmm. after you retire. So the bottom line is is that an investment is something, of course, that has an uncertain outcome. Insurance is something that has a guaranteed outcome. Insurance is something that you pay a little, uh, to get a lot if a certain event occurs, and um, an investment, uh, you could keep pouring money into it, and it still could keep losing money. So here we are in 2016 after two once-in-a-lifetime 50% crashes, of course, in the past uh, 15, 16 years, and people are just saying to themselves, I don't want to go there again. I want to make sure that I can stop worrying about the stock market so much, start enjoying my life, and that's where they look to the idea of having a pension, having Social Security, and then trying to make an income uh, work out of their investments. But when they <laughs> say to themselves, I just don't know if I can get all of the income I'll always need from these investments, especially if we have another one of these big bear markets, mm -hmm. That's where they say, look, uh, it's not that I woke up this morning wondering, hey, where can I find an annuity? But they start saying, where else can I go? Real estate, you know, that's an idea. But once uh, or twice a month, uh, clients will come in, and they'll have some of the big-name REITs out there that are illiquid, down 30 or 40 percent, and they can't get a dime out of it. And then if you uh, like real estate, uh, more power to you. If you are a landlord type, again, more power to you. But I've got landlords who come in and say, look, I can't keep it all in uh, real estate, and the day is going to come when I don't want to replace toilets anymore, and I just want to sit back and, and relax and uh, enjoy some income. So, yes, uh, I, I totally uh, uh, go along with that idea that the way to think of an annuity is that it is a combination investment and insurance, and then, of course, there are different types of ways of getting the in investment aspect of it. Some annuities are more akin to savings vehicles, and those would be just fixed annuities. Mm -hmm. But even fixed index annuities are savings vehicles. They're not investment vehicles in that sense. Lump sum principal still grows on the basis of interest. It's just that the interest rate is determined by getting a share of the upward movement of a stock market index. If market goes up 14% and they credit you with 6%, there's your interest for that year. If it falls next year, you could have zero interest. Um, and that's what it's all about, is achieving a savings, a good solid savings rate perhaps with some of the annuities. Variable annuities definitely meet that criteria of being an uncertain investment. Could go well, and then it might not. But one of the issues, of course, with variables is the uh, fees of 3 to 4% a year, quite a uh, uh, wagon to push up the hill. All right, Steve, you mentioned a couple of things there. You talked about some different types of annuities, and we mm -hmm. know that really there are only four categories of annuities. We've talked about that. Right. Yet we've also heard all these different terms, new generation, hybrid, next gen, and that's just a few. Right. So explain, what is the deal with all these nicknames? What do consumers really need to know? <laughs> they need to know what you said originally, that there are only four categories of annuities. So if you want a clear mind, if you're looking at annuities and you want to compare with a clear mind, and then when you go on the Internet, you want to understand what you're hearing uh, with a clear mind. Sometimes if you hear that an annuity locks up your money, we hear this. What are they talking about? Of course, they're talking about an immediate annuity, which is the business model of giving your lump sum of principal to the insurance company. And 
exchanging it completely uh, for a series of income payments, and those can be for the rest of your life, and they can be for you and your spouse for the rest of both of your lives. Depending on your age, that can be in the range of 5% to 7%. If you're in your 80s, that can be 9 or 10% of income coming your way. But it's not a return on an investment. It's an income. It's then income insurance is what you're buying pretty much with an immediate annuity. The deferred annuities, and it used to be thought that deferred meant tax deferred. That's not true. It just means that you're putting off the idea of annuitizing legally. That's what it's referring to. So deferred annuities do not lock up your money. You can put all your money into any deferred annuity today. And if you want to pull your money out 30 days from now or 60 days or a year from now, you can do it. Subject to what? Typically a surrender charge. And people say, well, why do there have to be surrender charges? Well, if you just want 100% liquidity, and that's the most important thing going, and you don't care about a lifetime income and you don't want the most competitive lifetime income or more dynamic methods of growing principal, then all you need is a money market. But if you're going to get into something with better guarantees and higher uh, income potential and better benefits from a stronger company, well, you are pooling your capital with a lot of other smart people like yourself who also want the guarantees and protection. And once that goes into an income pool, the highly paid Ph.D. mathematicians known as actuaries need to do their calculations based on that pool of capital being stable. And, gee, what do you know, they found that people tend to yank out all their money less when there are surrender charges. So bottom line is, is yes, there will be surrender charges, but your money's not locked up. If you have a 10% surrender charge after a year, which no one that I can think of would do that because you wouldn't set your portfolio up that way. You would have, you know, we do a four-bucket portfolio where you have cash, you have income, you have growth, and you have your outcomes. So there'd be no need to cash out. But if you did, you'd have, let's say, a 10% surrender charge. Has anybody ever lost 10% on a mutual fund? On a mutual fund? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I think... Uh, More than that on many occasions. Yeah, I mean, that's your biggest downside risk is you're suddenly needing to take all your money out, and you'd limit it to a 10% surrender charge. But understand this. Let's say after four years, you average 3% a year in interest on your lump sum principal. So you're up 12%. If there's a surrender charge remaining of, say, 8%, you'd walk away with 104% of your money. If you would like to retire and stay retired, Click the link to hear the rest of the show or to visit the website and learn more about making the move to the next generation of principal-protected, low-cost, high-income annuities through IQ Wealth Management in Scottsdale. Click the link now.